Before you head to the polls this November, will you first head to the box office to vote for these guys? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of the campaign. My name is Marty Huggins. I'm running for Congress. Huh? Does this mean we got a campaign? Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it real good. That little guy's a weirdo. I'm gonna smoke that clown. We're gonna be under a lot of media scrutiny. Anybody have anything that they want to share with us? I went to the petting zoo and I, I let the goat lick my w- one time I put a firefly in my butthole. Why? Wow. To make my farts glow. Okay. Thanks to his time on Saturday Night Live, Will Ferrell has a vast repertoire of characters. Unfortunately, though, some are better than others, which has led to a comedic film career of extreme highs and lows. Yes, while Talladega Nights, Blades of Glory, Step Brothers, and the other guys were all hits, Semi Pro, Land of the Lost, and Casa de Mi Padre were all flops. But one of his strongest characters, and some might even say strongest, is his portrayal of George W. Bush. In fact, his impression was so popular on SNL that even after he left, he brought the character to Broadway via the one-man show, You're Welcome America, A Final Night with George W. Bush. It was a bold move and characteristic of the same moves the comedian has been making behind the camera. He co-founded Funny or Die, arguably the premier comedy site on the web, which many a celebrity have used and still uses to not only show off their own comedic chops but build some buzz. For instance, Brian Williams' daughter Allison made a series of shorts on the website where she lampooned Princess Kate Middleton and promptly landed a lead role on HBO's Girls. Know who else used Funny or Die to build a buzz? Zach Galifianakis, whose Between Two Ferns series led him to keep himself in the spotlight after his breakout role in The Hangover. And while Galifianakis' film career is short-lived compared to Farrell's, his too has been marked by extreme highs and lows. Of course, the Hangover franchise has been huge for him, and Due Date did quite well at the box office. But Dinner for Schmucks underperformed, and his HBO show Bored to Death was cancelled. So will the campaign be a high or a low for Farrell and Galifianakis? Political comedy is always an audience favorite and a sweet spot for Farrell. Plus, this film is helmed by Jay Roach, who not only directed Austin Powers, but two Emmy-nominated and Emmy-winning serious political films for HBO. But as the U.S. presidential campaign heats up, are audiences going to be interested in this local politics spoof? Let's go find out. So what made you go and see this movie today? Uh, nothing. I just had it on my mind. I was like, uh, I need something to make me laugh, so... Did it make you laugh? It kind of, yeah, it kind of did make me laugh. Okay, kind of did. It wasn't my favorite of Will Ferrell's movies. I think it was really good for Zach Galifianakis. I don't know, it just didn't make me laugh as much, but it was it was good. Will Ferrell's one of my favorite com comedian yeah? actors, yeah. Well, he's had hits and misses. Yeah. Is this, this one, a hit or a miss? This is a hit. I think the script was forcing comedy in a few places. Um, that, you know, it just, when you're aware that they're trying to make jokes, it kind of removes you from the illusion. They kind of take it to the edge. Probably. Oh, okay. All right. Like, what do you, over, the so? yeah, like, over the line. Like over the line? Yeah. yeah. Further than you wanted to go. Yeah. I know it's a spoof, but do you think politics are like this at all in real life? We say it's a spoof, but I'm actually from Wilmington, North Carolina, oh, really? which is basically one county over from there. But um, yeah, it's a spoof. I mean, it just basically takes it and um, uh, it's an exaggeration of what really yeah. happens in campaigns and stuff. But uh, it's not too much of a spoof. I think of course it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people are always paying the backup who they want to get behind there so they can get certain bills passed. Yeah. Politics are in the news so much. Why would someone want to go see this as a movie for entertainment? I mean, it's, you know, it's not meant to be a political film. There, there was definitely an agenda and, you know, an ideology, ideology that they were pushing. Um, but it's a comedy first and foremost. What were they pushing? What would you think? Uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, an definitely an anti-Citizens United campaign. Uh, and as somebody who agrees with that, I was fine with it, so. I think it uh, kind of shows you that you really need to look at it and try to learn on it um, about the candidates yourself rather than just seeing what you see on TV and mm -hmm. read in the paper. A lot of times those things are just taken way out of proportion and are not accurate, but try to, if you can, get to know the, um, the actual candidates themselves. Oh, that's great. Oh, so, all right, so it sounds like both characters won you over, but who would you have vote, voted for? <laughs> Um, I'd have to give Cam Brady the nod. Neither of us. Neither? <laughs> no, absolutely. And Galifianakis. Galifianakis? I'll go with Marty. I think um, Zach, I forgot his last yeah. name. And what do you give the movie on a 1 to 10? Um, nine. I'd give it a 7. 7? Okay. I'd give it an 8. I don't know, about like a 5. I'm going to give it a 10. Great. I'm glad you like it. Will Ferrell. So as you can see, while audiences are voting for the campaign, they're not exactly doing it enthusiastically, overall giving the film a 7.5. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from Regal Ewok, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.